Hello, everyone. It's very hard or difficult task for me to talk about remote work in person, but I like to most talk in person because I can feel the audience, I can see the audience, I'm not speaking to the wall, so it's much better. And of course, I know it's almost the end of the day after coffee, coffee break, so no more hard topics about tech. I'm Radovan Bacevic, staff data engineer at gitlab.com, coming from Serbia, Novi Sad. Fortunately, now, fortunately, we'll not talk about data, we'll talk about remote work, as I said, and asynchronous way of work. It's our operational model. Of course, before we start, we're a big company now. This is from our legal department. Whatever I say, it's not GitLab opinion, it's just my opinion, so I can swear, set some bad jokes, make you laugh, whatever, which is cool for me. And how everything started. And you know, we have a company called GitLab, maybe you heard, maybe not, and we need to do something. And also, what makes us unique? Actually, we have two points, what I think make us unique. We are officially the biggest all remote company in the world. No office is no problem for us, that's one thing. And second thing, as per some sources, we are the most transparent company in the world. And that's one of the reasons I'm so happy to share my experience with you. See, on the internet, you can find about our culture. Everything what we are doing, entire operational model is exposed to the internet. It's something we call GitLab handbook. In that handbook, you can find how we are doing, what we are doing. Also, you can steal it, you can fork it, you can adjust it for your needs. For instance, United Nations, one of that department, they actually do exactly the same what they described, and they are free to use. We talk later in detail about the handbook. And from the beginning, we are all remote company. It's important to remember why. So we didn't start as an office or collocated environment, then move to remote operational model. No, we're starting from day one as remote company. Probably, as I said, to be on the safe side, we are the biggest all remote company in the world. I don't know for other companies, but using all remote, you will see what is that later on, we are the biggest one in the world. And we are advocating for asynchronous way of work. That is the thing beyond remote work. What does it mean? You should do it in asynchronous way. Your presence is not mandatory. You can do however you want, whenever you want, and in a way you fit your needs and your working style. And we are a global leader in distributed work. We like it, we are 24-7, we hire people all, in almost every corner on the earth. Of course, to survive, we need to earn some money, and we're earning money doing what? As I said, maybe you heard, maybe not, if you're in tech world, probably you know what we're doing. Actually, we're creating DevSecOps platform, delivering a single product. If I talk, gave this talk last year, it will be DevOps product. But these days, security and compliance are very important, so now it's DevSecOps era. My friend told me maybe you should call it DevSecOps, but I found it a little bit offensive for this type of events. So let's call it DevSecOps. This picture is super, super popular. All stages in software development life cycle, plus security and compliance outside of the box, are fit into our product. So it contains a couple of stages with all details what GitLab product can do for you. If you're tired and lazy, I know it's 5.30, just expose icon and stay name of the stages, what our product can do for you. To start killing you by PowerPoint and slides, just want to give you a taste about the company and want to expose using some numbers. As I said, from early beginning, zero offices. So no offices, no problem for us. What does it mean? Each and every team member in GitLab are working remotely. So no offices, no hub offices, no headquarters. I spoke with Piotr earlier, our headquarters, if you type it on Google Maps and say GitLab, actually it's a personal address of our owner. It's a security data breach, but that's the life. Official number is about number of employees. We are hiring around the globe 65 countries and regions with very few exceptions. Now we are a public company, so you can think of North Korea or Cuba, we will not hire, everything else is probably possible. I'm so proud of this number, 30 million plus registered users for small, hot startups, government, non-government organization, academia, secret services, well-known enterprise, they are using GitLab, both on-prem and SaaS or using private cloud. Up to you to decide, but as I said, this is growing and we are so proud of these numbers and contributors. All of them are part of our community because we are open source and open core from the beginning. This was before. More than 11 years in a row, we deploy and release new cool features of our product. Now, we change the rule, why? Each last Thursday of each month, we do the same. 
We don't want to overhelm our guys and try to do not work them during holidays or weekends, which is, I think, a good thing for us, just to have a human touch on our process. Our operational model regarding transparency is located in handbook, GitLab handbook. Unofficially, it's four times more. But whatever we are doing is there. How we are doing things remotely, what we are doing now, you can see there. For instance, if you want to hire new people, you can see how our hiring process is going. Even better, if you have a startup and you want to build and extend your data team, for instance, where I belong, we have our contribution there. It means you can go there and discover what the requirements are for data engineer, for data scientist, what kind of projects we are doing, what is the criteria to hire new people, and also what can be the expectation results, how you should measure success, how you promote the folks. Everything is there, and not only that, each and every part of our operational model. Also proud, one billion pipeline executed in our product. Also, some well-known person from Hollywood recognized us as early adopters. Mr. Kutcher know what he's doing, and he invested smart. Of course, how we do the things? Let me show you. You can do it remotely, of course, from nice and shiny beaches up to very dirty room. It's up to you, and probably the real truth is somewhere in between. And our offices looks like somewhere here. Well, in coming year, what will happen? Things will change dramatically, not only because of AI. There is also human touch. Talented people are everywhere. Do not cut your reservoir of talents if you're working only in one location. With remote work, world is yours. Cities are not probably the best place to live anymore. Pollution, cost of living, housing, you know the drill, especially in big city. You want to move somewhere and do your work. That's the second option. Next, business should be more agile. You know, crises are coming and going, and it's going all the time in, in some kind of cycles. So you should overcome that with your own truck, or I think you should do that. Leaders need more diversity. You can find diversity higher around the world. And also, some underrepresented group can speak up finally because of this operational model. People want to live healthy. Nine to five is probably not the best option these days commuting one, two hours to your work and back, things can be changed. So you need something called work-life balance. I don't know if it's a good term, but people usually often try to speak in that way. Well, main point here, work should go in asynchronous way. Not all the time you should sit, you will not be responsive all the time. One of the solution, I won't say this is the best, this is the worst, this is right or wrong, but this is how we are doing. Maybe it can inspire you to fit your needs in another way. Well, Culture of living will be outside of work. So this kind of social, social experiment, a social standpoint, and of course, no offense to HR department, but you should choose community or communities where you want to live and belong, not your department. Maybe radical statement, but yeah, that is how we think. Internet should be a human right, part of infrastructure, and if it is or it will be a vital link to economic environment, and venture capital is moving away from Silicon Valley. So no, all startups are creating there. You know that. India, even Pakistan, south part of Europe, especially Berlin. I know it's a great hub. Stockholm, Sweden, you name it. It can happen everywhere. So let's use and leverage that advantage. This practice will also extend to other industries. Now we're thinking about IT, but should be applicable for any kind of industries. When we're talking about remote models, you're thinking like sitting home and do something, and kids are behind and create a lot of noise, your wife is asking something for you, but no, there are a couple of models. From no remote, like no, no, you can't work remotely, up to all remote, we have several options. No remote means very simple, no, you should go to the office and do your work, great. Remote exceptions, it means you or you can do everything remotely, other, other people should go into the office. I was in that situation, generally I think it's a bad feeling, because I was honored to work from home, and other 2K people can't do that. So probably they're jealous of me, or they think something is not right, because you do not judge properly. Remote time, also known as a tolerated remote, because some employees take some days and do things remotely. I don't want to say from home, because you can do from whenever you want. Remote days, we can define, okay, each Friday, each second Friday, current week, entire week, can be 
official remote days. And of course, all good hybrid remote combination of any of these options. It means you can combine remote models. And we're shifting to the right side more for remote models. Remote first mean, okay, my company is optimized with documentation, process, tools, and people trained to do everything remotely. But we have office, we can go to the office. Remote only means, okay, no office at all, like for GitLab, but what is important? Core team hours. Let's imagine a situation. You, in, from Berlin, are working for a US-based company, and usually you should work second shift or provide some overlapping view with US time zones. It's seven up to nine, 10 time difference, so it can be difficult if you don't like to work late or second shift. Remote allowed, it's employed will to work from anywhere you want. And as a, let's say, more extreme option about remote working is all remote. GitLab is there. From day one to eternity, we have established procedures, process, people are trained to do everything remotely and asynchronously. So you can consider, let's divide remote work into small pieces in different categories because not all companies are the same. No right answer here, it's up to you to fit your needs and adjust it to your operational model. Well, not everything is nice and shiny. There are some pitfalls. If you're working remotely, you can feel very depressed. You can feel like you're in a satellite office outside of the main things. You can be guilt and feel guilt. You can be lack of support for remote work. You're not trained properly, you know, keep it, et cetera, et cetera. Or you're demanded for overperformance. That's a really dark side of the moon. Well, if you're talking about remote work, usually you see ads that say, we have perk to work remotely. But what is the truth? It's a product or it's operational model. Darren Marf is former head of remote in GitLab. We have that role. And he said, it's a product. Why? In order to have a product, you should have executive sponsorship from the top and full support and money and budget for that. A leader, head of remote in our case, launch strategy, education strategy, people should be trained for that. It doesn't happen overnight, of course. Experimentation, make it better and better and better for small steps, we call it iteration, and do the updates. So. You can't expect product level result with perk budget or investment. This is very wise, I like this. And it's very easy to describe why I distinguish perk from product or operational model. That's how they call it these days. Honeymoon is over, you're working remotely, everything is good, but there are some problems. What is next? It's asynchronously or async. As per definition, to be on the same page, what means asynchronous work? Very simple concept. Do whatever you can to do. Document it, write down everything, GitLab handbook. Transfer ownership to someone else. You are unblocked, so you can focus to do on your other tasks. Or, in other words, you can think of meetings. Your presence is mandatory. It can be pain in the neck. Well. This world is dictated by calendars and schedules. We want to break it, because I want to have a deep work to focus on my job. But on the other side, I want to have a good balance to collaborate with my colleagues, teammates, and the community. So where is the truth? Probably for us in some asynchronous way of work. Forget on meetings during night, day, especially if working around the globe. Well, why async? Always everything starts with the why. Asynchronous work is really great fit for engineering-oriented companies. We are a product company doing that using best engineering practice. I work in data team using best engineering practice. And we are a good candidate, or maybe you are a good candidate, to introduce asynchronous way of work. Of course, there is also dark side about criteria who can't or shouldn't use asynchronous way of work. Where time is critical and action is critical to be Prompt, probably asynchronous way is not the best operational model. All companies are different. Are you ready for it? Let's say if you're working in collocated or office environment, you want to switch and acquire any of these models I mentioned already. The question is, are you ready? I would say communication is crucial. You should build proper process 
provide the proper tools for your workers and educate people, plus promote that from top bottom approach. How you should shift your mindset? It's not lift and shift approach if you want to switch the environment. You should build a culture around remote work. I'm probably boring to mention one thing 10 times here, but it's vital for us to have a culture, written documentation, and to promote our values in order to think together about our operational model. This is not for everyone, of course. I, I'm super aware of that, but anyone can do that. You need a culture. You need to establish a healthy, non-blaming, healthy work space for your workforce. It means if you're not here, you should go out, you should do something with your kids, you should go to the doctor, you want to exercise, or you want to take a nap, or go to grocery store, please do it. You can find it in our handbook, like exactly the same. If you want to go to sleep, go. We are measuring output, not inputs. I don't care, is it nine to five, is it sporadic work, whatever you want to do is okay. But you should enable and promote and encourage people to work in healthy workspace. Mission. Number one rule, you should have a mission for your company. And our mission said everyone can contribute. When we say everyone, it doesn't mean only about GitLab workforce. We think of you, you, you. We are an open corner, open source. All of you are part of community. Even you, anyone of you, can and should contribute. You need to create your own mission. You need to define values you should stick with, you should live with them, and sub values so you can execute in your operational model. Let me give you an example. This is for us. Acronym is called CREDIT. It's easier to remember. And it stands for, you see, collaboration, result for customers. Before this was the only result, we shift the direction and said, okay, we're super obsessed with our customers, so let's change the value. Now it's result for customers. Be efficient, support diversity, inclusion, and belonging, iterate on the process, product, everything in our working life, and make it better and better and better. And be very transparent. Put everything about your work in the handbook or somewhere else, but handbook is a single source of truth. Feel free to be inspired and do something similar for you, but actually we're really living this value. And this is number one. All other values are bringing us to create results for customers. Then, communication is a bit different. You need to reassess your communication process. I mean, also it's good when you sit with your colleagues and drink some beer, coffee, whatever you want, and chat over that. It's super fast, super efficient. On the other side, it's not possible all the time. I would say bye-bye, I needed meetings and emails. I'm so proud. Meetings are not mandatory in GitLab, but what is mandatory? Agenda and record a meeting. Also, if you go to YouTube and type GitLab unfiltered Radovan, you'll find all of my meetings. I'm only Radovan in GitLab. And I do not use uh, emails anymore, except I apply for some conference or just communicate with the partners. But inside the company, this is irrelevant. I like that. Of course, some meetings you should attend because you feel it's super important. But if you're not able to do that, no problem. Put what you think, what you want to ask in agenda. Watch recorded meeting catch up tomorrow and everything is cool. Well, you should document what the expectations are about work and documentation. Also, you should formalize informal communication. This is a bit awkward, but actually what does it mean? We have a couple of techniques for that. We have social call, just organize a bunch of people in one place without agenda. Agenda is not mandatory here and do some open talk. Sometimes data team organizers say, okay, let's talk about these questions, what kind of pizza do you like? Or something where you travel tomorrow or during summer holiday, up to you. But social calls are very important in asynchronous work environment. This is synchronous, of course. Coffee chats, the random tool or Slack plugin can organize coffee chat with other teammates from outside of your team. It's a random pickup guy. Even CEO is part of this coffee chat so you can share your experience. This is fantastic, I like it, because I can easily discover how people are living in Australia, New Zealand, how my colleague from America moved to Mexico and why, what's the cost of living there, what is advantage or disadvantage, or to see what's going on in London these days. Then, co-working calls, this is usually on a team level. Organize something informal for your team, find out privately more about your teammates. Travel if it's okay, if you can do that, otherwise, organize co-working call. 
Ask me anything. Anyone in the company can contribute and create something can be very handy for the company. Usually, once per month, we have CEO ask me anything. From how you prepare for your next marathon, how is your health, what is the plan for the future, will you sell GitLab, etc., etc. But anyone can do this. Talent show and tournaments. We have hackathons, we have workshops, we have presentations. If you want to learn, that's the right place. It's just about exchange. Also, thanks channel. Also, I like this. Without any reason, this is a very cheap way to express your gratitude. Just say thanks to, mention someone for this and that, and everyone can see that. Feeling is super good, it's zero cost, and maybe it's a good idea to promote this in your company. Chat channels for shared interest. I like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, I like to read, I like to travel, I like Lego, and I have a channel for each of these. If I want to find out which books I will read next, or set of books, I go to my book club channel. If I want to see who is in Berlin and visit my colleagues, I have something called Location Berlin channel, or Location Belgrade, or Location London, whatever, and can meet more people, people in person. But everything inside is like. Theoretically, this requires separate session. I had a session about that. But as I said, everything what we are doing is in handbook. This is single source of truth. Why this is important? If you have any ambiguity about what is the truth, you ask your manager, he said A, you said B. If B is here, it means B is truth. It should be updated. Also, people are often asking me, okay, how you keep everything in sync? But you can think of 2K people, put one sentence per day, it can be a few million per year. It means it can grow nicely, you can keep it up to date, but you should be disciplined about that. Of course, you need to be master in your job. Company should provide you great level of autonomy and you need to see the purpose why you are here and what are you doing there. Well, that is what we are called manager of fun. I organize myself, I have great level of autonomy and I can execute my work in a good way, as I want. Some nonos, what we find, it's very difficult to sort out. Do not assume all resources are available. You need to learn, you need to move forward, you need to iterate, and you make, need to make your process better and better. No shift and lift migration. It's not the same in a nutshell. And of course, do not transfer all meetings to all remote asynchronous environment. It's not necessarily, really. For instance, we are asynchronous, we have no stand-up. We just have a plugin in Slack to say what you did yesterday, how you spent your day, what you plan to work, do you have any blockers? I am done in less than one, two minutes, and everyone is doing the same. So it's time-saving tool for us. Not all the people can do properly from their home or do they're equipped with all they need company provides everything for us. We have a budget, and then we can equalize our remote conditions. Even better, they will reimburse the cost of co-working space if you want to be among real people, not be isolated and speak with the pigeons, like I'm doing from time to time. Well, it will not happen overnight. If you want to move from co-located to remote environment, it can be tough, be patient, and be persistent. Management and management process is not drastically different. It's almost the same or similar. And your manager needs to adapt to that, but still keep in head, process is process, and it will be the same. Your values should be changed through time, how you learn and how you evolve. That is what I said, not results, results for customer at the moment. Before we wrap up, I want to ask you first, I have a question for you, who is working remotely? Nice. Who is working in the office only? Just you? Who is working so-so? So you're an exception. <laughs> That's great. Before we wrap up, what questions do you have for me regarding the remote work? Yes? How do you um, what, what I see in, 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 in our team and our company, we have a big challenge uh, when it comes to onboarding new colleagues. Yes. So uh, my question to you is, how do you deal with onboarding new colleagues? Yeah. That is something I plan to put in this presentation. I think it's super important. I was onboarded online, completely. How it started? Before you started, you have your something called mentor or buddy. 
onboarding body. So we determine one guy who is in the same time zone and do in the same team or similar team, so he can understand your pain when you start that. You know how it's going, it's overwhelming. Then we open two issues. You can find the template, everything is open source. GitLab.com slash analytics slash data template, something, you will find it. Search is bad, but you should find it. And one issue is for general, meet GitLab. Building blocks of GitLab, what is important? Usually it's link, a lot of links to our handbook. This is the company, this is our values, mission, na, 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 you know. Then, second issue is specific for your role. I am data engineer, I hire a new guy, I am onboarding body, I can help with everything that guy needs and that person what needs, and that person should go in that team-specific issue, second one, and finish everything after four weeks. What is a mandatory step? In week one, you should commit something. How? Read handbook. If something is a clear, fix it, commit, and you're there. Right? So you encourage, like, yeah, I know what I'm doing, even if it's just a typo, whatever. But it's a mandatory step. Your onboarding body will help you in any option. Plus, we have one on one meeting with our manager each week, started from day one. So it's also cyclical help from upper level. And your onboarding body is on your level. So, in a nutshell, we can talk about this in hours, but in a nutshell, two issues onboarding body, coffee chats, check up from time to time, be helpful and one-on-one -on -one with the manager. More questions? Yes? Um, I'm a big fan of remote work, so I'm not, this isn't really a criticism, but the one kind of thing that sticks out to me that I know that some places have trouble with is hiring juniors mm -hmm. uh, with remote. And that's, sometimes it's the preference of the juniors themselves, or sometimes it's just it's, they're harder to onboard because they have less experience. How many, what percentage of, of GitLab hires are of junior-like zero to two years experience employees? And, and very few, very I would few. say, okay. yes. Because okay. the, uh, I would say next slide is about, this is not for everyone. But we hire juniors. I onboard one guy, he's complete junior with one year experience. It was a bit tough for him because you know, when you started, you need real people around you to support you quickly. So we try to imitate and mimic of that, like be very helpful and responsive quickly. For that reason, onboarding body was in the same time zone in India, in our case, and guy was doing great. It's slower, it's a little bit tougher than in person, of course, I admit that, but we have some kind of techniques to overcome that. Also, I will be lazy and say, go to our handbook and check onboarding. Check our issues and you will see. Probably that can be good inspiration for you. More questions? You're next, sorry, we'll come to you. Uh, I think you all already answered the question with, uh, with okay. what the previous person answered, but uh, how do you deal with um, cultural differences? That's always the issue, especially I think you feel that I was living in Sweden and I was a boss, a team lead, and also I have people from all around the world. Probably I know it's very multicultural environment in Berlin. From my point of view, I'm a geek here. I deeply go in each and every person I lead or I'm doing with that person cultural background. I want to speak with them so I can meet them better. I can smell them, if you know what I mean. Like, okay, what is your background? What kind of school you finish? What is your standpoint in your life? So I can understand, I, I can speak your language. I can at least have some, build some empathy to you. And of course, it is a difficult part and it's tough, but I would say it's really great diversity which make a gr great product. We think differently. If you have a problem, it's easier to sort out if you have a diverse team. But please try to understand all persons in the room, uh, virtually speaking. Okay? Um, so uh, how do you decide your priorities, like w your to-do list for the day? Uh, actually, we have that manager fun approach. I have tasks. How we are doing? We have something called OKR. Objective key results. Quarterly, we try to fit what I will do. I, will, I can assign and choose two OKRs in agreement with my manager, and it took 70% of my work. 10% is firefighting, and 20% is everything else, what pops up or my ideas or some exploration. Theoretically speaking, it's 10, 20, 70, 70. it's 100%. But I can decide, I will decide. Oh, you always listen, not only manager, but your team and other teams. We have something called stable counterpart. It's first point of contact between or among more teams. And then I decide, because I speak with my manager from RD and say, okay, they need this. My data team said we need this. Then I said, okay, Dennis, it's my manager, Dennis. 
What is the priority? If I'm completely lost, I will ask my manager. I will try to organize myself. If I'm unsure or want to double check, speak with my manager or managers if there are more parts in that conversation. But mainly we have high level of autonomy there. Questions? Your turn. Yeah, in, in, my, in my case, in, in my team, we have a problem that uh, a lot of people are, are, don't really like to participate in, in the informal events or call. So are you making this mandatory or how, what is your approach? Because it's, uh, it's really hard to press on this because some people, uh, for them, it's kind of, you know, I'm not very social, I'm, I'm like this. There is this uh, more, yeah. Getting in a call with unknown people makes me stressed. So. So it, on the other case, you don't have to press them. So how do you? Do you uh, I will. I will use my own experience on the company level. Not it's, it can't be mandatory. Of course, we're all different. We have value called diversity, inclusion, and belonging. There are also some techniques I learning a long time back in some agile environment courses, whatever. And they said you should allow everyone to speak up. For someone, it's very difficult to speak up in front of a room like this, or even in front of one guy. Someone can talk in front of millions. In that case, if you're shy and more introvert, your manager should understand that. I think in this case, it starts from manager. Because sometimes when you have a meeting, formal meeting, people are scared to speak up. Then they write down and read. And also manager should do, let's say, equalizing the time everyone is talking. Regarding the informal events, that's okay. We have a gathering in March this year in Las Vegas, and I think we have a survey after that, and 8% of people don't want to attend, and say the reason is, I don't want to attend. <laughs> I'm scared. That's my, oh, that's okay. I mean, we, most of us were very thrilled about we are going to Vegas, gamble, you know, great time, and companies paid everything, but 8% say, okay, I don't care, I will stay at home. That is what it is. I mean, probably there is some way to maybe speak one-on-one -on -one with that person. Because I had a problem, not problem, I'm very offensive and cocky, you know, we are from Southeast Europe, that's how things are going in my country. But sometimes I was very offensive to other guys, they're more shy, they can't speak because of me, and then I realized, okay, I should calm down and let them talk. And everything was fine at the end. But I think there is no formal way to force someone. If I force an introvert or people don't want to end, it will be more resistance. Not find the proper way for that person, maybe one-on-one -on -one is good. Okay, I know you're shy, you don't want to go to an official meeting, let's drink a coffee, chat about something. Because most of people just want to talk, but they're scared or they're not comfort in environment like this. Okay? More questions? Let's wrap up then. Some takeaways, you know the meme. It's not for everyone. As I said, you should wisely choose your work, workforce, not only seniors and mediators, but also juniors. But you need to feel the good cultural fit and people who can stick with our values, called credit in our case. Then everything should be easier. Not perfect, but easier. This is a product, not a perk. We mentioned why it's like that. You need time, resources, skills, training, and people to shift in case you want to shift, unless you're completely low remote from the beginning. And you can choose the model you want to implement. I won't say something is good or bad, it's just what fit your needs. That's a perfect solution for you. Think about that. Mainly, it's about communication and building the culture around your operational model. For that reason, we have head of remote who is taking care about strategy and vision about remote work, not about the core business. Well, what we mentioned a couple of times today, very important, mastering autonomy and purpose, require a specific set of skills. If you don't have them, your company should train you properly. Then you can be manager of fun. You are responsible for your career and your work and your outcome. That is what we think, and I think this is very good. Sometimes it's tough and stressful, but still probably the best work, at least for me. Total transparency, brutal transparency. That is the way how you should operate. And you need to find single source of truth. It's GitLab handbook in our case. Well. This way of work, at least in our case, can unleash many potentials like mastering about what you're doing, be better and better, have a great level of autonomy, no one is sitting on your shoulder, it's very bad for the business, and you can see the purpose and you can easily answer why you're working in your company. If you don't know that, probably you're in the wrong chair. 
Well, just my opinion. This will be the future of work accepted by majority, not only in IT business. And then, this is me. I'm always open to talk not only about remote work, but also about data. That's my primary world where I'm doing the business and where I belong in that community. So feel free to add me to LinkedIn. Ask me after the talk. More than happy to discuss about anything regarding work about you, especially about this remote and asynchronous way of work. So yeah, this is me. And this picture from one of the conferences in Budapest, I look very nice and fine there. So that's the reason I put it there. And nothing more to say than danke and thank you very much. Always have a great time, Berlin. Thanks a lot.